Despite how famous Tesla has become, the real story of the company's beginnings seem to remain untold. For many people, Elon Musk is the man behind Tesla. While Musk is definitely a very significant figure in the history of the company, he didn't actually found Tesla himself. Musk joined Tesla a few months after its founding, initially as an investor. The real founders of Tesla, who built the company throughout the first few years of its existence, are two men that many have never heard of. Today, we'll take a look at the beginning of the Tesla company and what happened with its original founders. Tesla's story begins with Martin Eberhard, an engineer and entrepreneur who, after selling his company and divorcing his wife, wondered what to do next. There were two things in his mind. He wanted to start a new company and buy a sports car. Due to the fact that Eberhard was already concerned about global warming, he decided that buying an electric car would be a better solution than buying one with a combustion engine. It was during his search for a suitable electric car that he noticed the business potential in the electric car market and decided to start his own company in this niche. He quickly involved Mark Tarpening, his partner from their former ebook reader company Nouveau Media, which they managed to sell for $187 million. The men registered their new company on July 1, 2003, under the name Tesla Motors in reference to famous inventor Nikola Tesla. The founders rented their first office, and a third person soon joined the company, an engineer by the name of Ian Wright. Eberhard initially used Excel to compare how different configurations of various parameters of an electric car would affect the appearance and performance of the vehicle. He came to the conclusion that the electric drive would perform better in a light sports car than in other car models. Meanwhile, Tarpening developed a financial model for the car. The partners decided to focus on the luxury market. This was in line with the introductions of other innovative products to the market such as mobile phones and refrigerators. In these historical examples, companies initially focused on expensive products aimed at the richest segment of the market, and then, as technology developed, would follow a gradual change to more affordable products. At this time, the founders also outlined plans for how to produce their first car. After establishing all these plans for the development of Tesla, it was in January 2004 that the founders started looking for investors who would be willing to put money into their company. The problem was that starting an automotive company from scratch was considered a very tough challenge. As it was incredibly capital intensive, finding investors who would be willing to risk money by investing in such a venture was difficult. Tesla managed to raise funds from Compass Technology Partners and SDL Ventures. However, the company still needed the main investor who would finance the construction of a prototype vehicle. Both Eberhard and Tarpening remembered a guy named Elon Musk. They had seen him earlier at the Mars Society Conference at Stanford, where he talked about sending mice into space. They thought that this was a man who thought differently than others and might be interested in investing in an electric car. The founders managed to contact Musk and convince him to invest in Tesla. As a consequence, Musk invested $6.5 million and became the largest shareholder in the company. Musk also engaged his friend J.B. Straubel in Tesla, who at the time was building batteries for electric cars. Tesla was able to use these new funds to start working on a prototype vehicle. Tesla's plan to recruit employees was to hire young engineers who were looking for new challenges. Such employees worked hard for the company and didn't have as high financial requirements as experienced employees. In the meantime, Tesla rented a new office for its research and development workshop, in which it began to build its first car, Roadster. The plan to build the vehicles was simple. The company planned to use the AC propulsion T0 drivetrain and the Lotus Elise chassis. When it came to the rest of the car parts, the company wanted to buy them from outside suppliers. Tesla engineers were to focus on things like, for example, electrical installation or the development of batteries. The main team building the prototype of the car was created by Straubel, Jean Berdakevsky, who left Stanford to work in Tesla, and the capable engineer Dave Lyons. In the car's construction, the Tesla team wanted to take advantage of the latest developments in lithium-ion battery technology. Until then, 
lithium-ion batteries were used in devices in the field of consumer electronics, such as laptops. The innovative idea of the company was to connect many lithium-ion cells together and create a car battery out of it. Finally, at the beginning of 2005, the engineer managed to come up with a battery solution that allowed a car to drive. After the car ride, Musk was pleased enough to invest $9 million in Tesla. Tesla got to work on adjusting the car's design and finished building a black version of the Roadster, known as the EP1. After the car was presented, Musk invested further money in Tesla, this time $12 million. Musk was joined by other investors such as JP Morgan, Larry Page, and Sergey Brin. At that time, the company raised a total of $40 million for further development. Tesla engineers then built the red prototype EP2 and presented both prototypes, EP1 and EP2, at trade fairs, where the press and famous personalities appeared. The company announced that the car would cost about $90,000 and were able to drive about 400 kilometers on a single charge. It was around that time that the Tesla car became a kind of sensation. At car shows, the company raised millions of dollars from people willing to buy a car. The real challenge for Tesla turned out to be the mass production of the Roadster. The problems, among others, included the Roadster gearbox. The company had a hard time getting a gearbox that would work well with their vehicle. Another issue was the global supply chain. Tesla began to build a global supply chain, which meant to work this way that different parts of the car were produced in different countries. However, Tesla's global supply chain was costly and caused delays in the production process of the Roadster. The company's entire action plan seemed chaotic. When Musk found out about the problems with production, he asked for help. The man who arrived was engineering consultant Tim Watkins, who already had experience in managing the production process. After several weeks of analysis, Watkins presented Musk with what he had found out. It turned out that the production of his Roadster was supposed to cost up to $200,000, while the company planned to sell it for only $85,000. Substantially exorbitant costs, as well as other problems in production, led to the moment when Eberhard was removed from the CEO position. People at the company felt that Eberhard had exhausted his potential and doubted that he would be able to lead the company from the research and development phase to the production phase. Additionally, following the disclosure of real production costs by Watkins, it seemed to Musk that Eberhard was simply badly managing the company. Eventually, Musk called Eberhard and informed him that he had been removed from the CEO position. Initially, the board changed Eberhard's position to be director of the technology department, but eventually, after a few months, Eberhard left the company. Eberhard claimed that such production costs and delays were not entirely his fault, and Watkins did not quite accurately portray the situation in the company. Finally, this situation led to the public conflict between Eberhard and Musk. After Eberhard was removed from the CEO position, the board appointed Michael Marx as the new CEO. However, when Marx's plan for the future of Tesla started to interfere with Musk's vision of the company, Marx was replaced by Zeev Drory, who was considered to be a man following Musk's orders. Around that time, the second Tesla founder, Mark Tarpening, also left the company. He found it less pleasant to work in the company without Eberhard. He didn't get along with the new CEO Drury, and he didn't see himself in the company any longer. This was the story behind the beginning of Tesla. If you want to see more stories about companies and entrepreneurs, don't forget to check the other videos on our channel.